basically we have been working with the IIT Bombay. We all four have been working with. Am I audible? We have been working with uh, working under Fatak sir and Avinash sir for the past one and a half years on IIT Bombay X project. And uh, actually for this Python thing we have around one and a half hours Python and Django. So that's a bit less time for telling you everything about Python and Django. So we would be giving you a glimpse of what exactly uh, the basic data types and all. Okay. So me and Anand would be telling you about Python and these two guys would tell you about Django. So we'll be looking about the history, the installation part, the naming conventions, the basic data types, sequences, tuples, lists, then uh, the installation and all. So basically Python was invented in late 90s, sorry the early 90s. It was invented in Netherlands by Guido van Rossum. Basically the name Python, uh, do you know the how the name Python has been arose? Uh, yes? Right, right. There was a famous British TV shows in 70s, it was uh, named as Flying Service. Yeah. So it was the script was written by Monty Python, and uh, this guy wanted uh, some mysterious name and a tacky na name, so he gave the name as Python to this language. Uh, Python is an open source language. You all know the advantage of an open source language. You can do many things. Uh, the whole open source community can contribute to any open source project. Uh, basically, since a long time, it has been considered a scripting language. But more, uh, Python is not just a scripting language. It has uh, using Python, you can do many lot of things, right from developing a, a web project to anything. Uh, you can do many big data projects, you can do so many things using Python. So Python basically is a interpreted, object oriented and a functional language. So the main advantage of functional language is you can divide the language or you can divide the code into multiple sections. So your uh, code becomes much easier. Different features of Python language could be it's easy to learn. Mostly Python has uh, the English keywords in it. So learning Python and uh, all its uh, all other things in Python are a bit easier because of it. It has a huge associated libraries with it. So the it's, it's one of the most important features. You know uh, SciPy, you know, you know these libraries. M most of these scientific computation libraries could be used with Python. Many uh, inter I mean, information security stuff can be, those libraries can be used with Python. So the, the scope of Python has been uh, increasing day by day. So it has an interactive mode, it's portable, it's extendable, it can be connected to multiple databases. I mentioned about big data. So the NoSQL languages have been constantly or are gradually being used by the huge data science community these days. So these NoSQL languages can also be used with Python, you know Mongo, you know you tell every any language uh, any database sorry mysql those, those, those traditional structured databases as well as no sql databases and gui programming can also be done with python so i guess the, the basic what python is you might have understood what python is 
so now we'll look about the installation part uh, if we consider unix systems any ubuntu or a linux machine or any mac os python is pre installed in any of these machines so you need not worry at all if you want to install it on windows you just go to python.org and on the home page there is a windows installer so even in that case you just download the msi packages you start uh, i mean in the installation as any windows installation and that's not a issue in that case as well so python can also be used with uh, can can be used with different ides so the different ides for python are emac then you can you can use it with eclipse by pydev and uh, you here you don't need to install anything because every in at iit every machine is ubuntu so you need not install it here so rest assured so the python interpreter one of the important feature with python is its interpreter so it basically is an interpreter an interpreter what is it it's basically a right so it converts the high level language i mean you pass it through an interpreter right so any language could be implemented using i mean uh, it can be compiled and run you can run it by compiling it or you can pass it through an interpreter both have got its own advantages and disadvantages right so uh, we use a python interpreter here so in this case on a interpreter uh, on your console you just type python and you can get into the interpreter or the console of python basically uh, whenever you type python the, it prompts with uh, this symbol right three uh, the during an installation part whenever the python gets installed it gets embedded with the current version number so any machine can have multiple python versions whenever it gets installed in windows it gets installed in your c and the python uh, folder i mean in that folder which is embedded with the, its current version whereas on the ubuntu machine it goes into user bin and then the python version number so whenever you enter into a, the python console you just type your code there and if you want to exit from that console you type i mean you hit control d keys so any python pro file have an dot py extension so whenever you want to call python uh, using an interpreter you just type python and the file name dot py on the console and also if you want to make any python file see using this what you your program might get executed on the console but if you want to make the file itself as an executable you can make it so what you need to do is you will have to include this line at the as a starting line of your file if it's fact.py include this line as a first line of your file then execute this command change mode of that particular file and then execute this makes the file as an executable so you can execute the file by using this command uh, the file name itself on the console so basically there the the same location 
no just go back see this line would be included in your python file so first line of the python file then you execute this command on a console this will make that file as an executable okay and then execute that file on the console itself. No, no, no. It is the path where Python has been stored. See, if this you have installed Python 2.7, so in that case, this would be Python 2.7 here. Okay, the path where Python has been installed. Yeah. So, the basic data types in Python are integers and the strings basically integers you know what an integer is so in python the integers are immutables so what does an immutable object means is the value of a particular variable cannot be changed after it has been initialized and the integers can be of four types one is a normal int, the second is long, third is float, and uh, sorry, I don't remember the fourth one. Uh, the other basic data type is a string. So, for specifying any string, you can use either double quotes or you can also use the single quotes in that for using a string. And uh, that's it. If you want to use a single code within that string, in that case, see, can you see here? A single code has been used in that string. So that number of double codes are included outside that particular string. Explain. See. I want a string named A. See, I want a string named A semicolon B. So, whenever you want to use any string, see, the string name is Y. Okay? You want to initialize it, you can either use as AB or you can use it as AB double. And if I want to use a string as a such string, okay, so in that case there would be an issue here, right? So the interpreter or the this might think that this is the only string, it won't consider b in that case. So what would you do is you will include a a single quote here and the double quotes outside. This would be for the whole thing. I mean, do you get it? Yeah. So in all other languages, white spaces are not uh, given that importance. Whereas in Python, white spaces are very much important. So why are they important? Is because of the indentation thing in Python. So in any language. If you compare it with Java or in Java what happens is you use blocks, right? In C you use braces. So whereas in Python you don't use braces, I mean you don't use blocks and for the, those blocks you don't use braces. Here what happens is you give proper indentation and those white spaces here are very much important because of that. I'll give you an example of this. Chalo uh, comments in Python starts with an hash if it's a single line comment. If it's a multi-line comment, you use such things. 
the double quotes or single quotes three times. Uh, assignment in Python. So, in any language like Java, I am talking only about Java because you might have used Java on a large scale in your colleges. In Java, whenever you want to assign anything, you append with, with its data type int y is equal to 10, int or float y is equal to 10. Whereas in Python, you need not give its data type. And again, whenever any, whenever you want to use any variable, it need not be declared initially. You can start using whenever you want it. Uh, you create a name, the first time it appears on the left side of an assignment expression and the assignment expression is, is equal to, whereas for comparison you use two equal to six. Also you can assign multiple names at the same time. So you assign x and y the same value as two. At the, I mean at the same time, x is assigned 2 and y is assigned 3. And also this makes swapping a bit easier. And uh, uh, the error handling as well as the, I mean, the error handling is very beautiful in Python whenever an error is raised, it is properly mentioned what has, what issue has exactly been occurred. Also whenever you want to, whenever you access any variable which has not been uh, assigned any value before, so that gives you an issue. So first assign some value to any variable and then use it. Otherwise it might give you an error. Yeah. So. Any variable name, uh, you can give variable names as you want, but there are certain reserved words which you cannot assign or you cannot use in uh, your code. And those are and, assert, break, class. Do you want to write it down or? Should we go to the next slide? So there are certain naming conventions, every language has got its convention and Python, it has not been recommended by the community but it is better if you use these conventions, naming conventions. It is better if you avoid I, L and O in your, uh, because what happens is many times if you declare any variable as I. And if you switch to any other uh, any other editor, in that case, you might get confused with one or L, right? So it is better you don't use such uh, variables. Then for functions, methods, and attributes, you used joined lowers, that is, uh, if it's a function, define it as So it's everything lower for a function, method and an attribute. If you want to declare any constants, it is better you use everything in caps locks and uh, the class names also should be uh, caps words. The modules should be all lower case letters and for the attributes there should not be any underscore sign. Uh, if you talk about modules, the modules can consist, the module names can consist of many words. So those many words can be uh, used with an underscore as well. So if it's intern Mumbai, so an attribute can have an underscore in it. Whereas for an attribute, uh, you cannot give a, you should not give an 
leading underscore. Uh, the control flow statements or the loops here, the basic loops while and for loop. So, whenever what basically a while loop do, you know that, and this while loop should be terminated with the uh, semicolon here, and then the whole. Uh, so that's what I said. This indentation matters a lot in Python. Here, in Java, what you need to do is you need to give those braces. Whereas in Python, if you write this line, this line a bit. Uh, here, this will give an error. If you write it here, in this line, this this statement won't be considered to be a part of this loop. Okay, so there should be a proper indentation always. Same for the for statements. Um, this basically is a sequence. So this for loop would iterate through every. Uh, index of that sequence. Okay. Uh, no. Yeah, both can be. Python 3.1 I guess. So anyhow you will be using Python 4, right? I mean 4 nine. 2.7 you will be using. Right, right, right. If it's a if you want to, Agitha, you can use range as well. So if you have range of values from 1 to 20, you can use range. So for i in range 1 to, it's, it should start from 1 itself. So from 1 to 5, it would. Yes, you can change that. You just need to. You can even. Uh, incremented here, right? You can, you cannot use it here in the range. You can, or else, what you can do is range five comma one or two. That would increment it by two numbers. Five comma two. Okay. So that would increment it in the range function. Then, similarly for if statement, we use if. Uh, here you don't use else. Basically, the condition should not be given in braces in an if statement. And uh, if ends with a semicolon, then this whole statements are considered to be of this if statement. Uh, the else part here it is written as else if, not as else if or else. Then you can also use pass, break and continue statements in your code, what? It just passes to the next, uh, next, uh, if you are using it in a loop, if you use a pass, it moves the execution to the, uh, any statement after that loop. Yeah. Pass loop loop se bahar aa
Using a break, you just move out of that whole loop, right? So, also you can use as it's a functional language. So you can define it in that function as itself. Syntax abhi mujhe to baat mein aaya. So functions basically are, uh, you know, the role of a function. So here, if you want to define any function, you have to define it using def keyword. So the function name is given after the keyword def the function name and any arguments which you want to pass to that particular function. This is, I just haven't seen the example. Okay, so this would print a space here. Fine. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. So basically, the you can pass arguments to any function using keyword arguments. So if you consider this particular function as parrot and these different arguments to it, if you don't pass any argument to this function, this particular variable or any argument will have this as a default value. And this, these basically, this is a, uh, this is not an optional argument to this particular function whereas these should be considered as an optional argument. So here we are basically passing one compulsory argument whereas three optional arguments. So if you want to call this particular function, how it is called actually? So you can call it as one positional argument. This 1000 would be given to voltage then you can also give you you can give a one keyword argument the keyword should be mentioned there these are two keyword arguments these are this is an example of two keyword arguments basically any argument which has been given there with any value here this should be considered a default value you can also replace it with whenever you call it so in that case you need to give the uh, argument name in there whenever you call it
see if if these you know, are this can have default values. So in that case, we did mention the keyword. I mean the argument as well as its value whenever we call it. So what's it? Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? You can give the argument name if you want to. If you don't want it, if it's a see, that's a positional argument. Okay. argument name right there. keyword so the voltage can be written at the first place then it's a if you want to write it using the positional in the positional sequence you will need to write it at the first if you want to use it like here we have changed the position so it's a keyword argument so in that case you need to write the keyword as well Till now what differences we have observed in this slide says in Java all variable names must be explicitly declared. So it's like integer i, integer any variable name whereas in Python you need not declare the data type as well as those other things are not declared at all. Uh, if you talk about the container objects like vectors and array lists in Java, uh, it cannot have or uh, basically in Python if you talk about lists and dictionaries, it can hold objects of any type whereas if you talk about vectors, no, it cannot have primitives such as zinc, right? And the code in Java is the code in Java is uh, a bit lengthy. If you s talk about just a print statement in Java, it's a five line code. Whereas in Python, the code is just one line. So the main advantage, one of the advantages of Python is it optimizes your code length, and in turn it increases the efficiency and the other uh, difference between java and python can be since both are object oriented languages both this can be an object oriented can be used as an object oriented language uh, if you in an any object oriented language you have many classes so in java if you want to write a class you will have if you want to write 15 classes you will have 15 files Whereas in Python, if you want to write 15 classes, you can write all the 15 classes in the single file itself. Uh, the next detailing about the sequences and other data types, uh, my friend Anand would continue. 